What's happening guys? Today I want to cover something that a lot of you have been asking about and that is taxes for FBA. Some of you sell in the US, some of you sell in the UK or other countries in Europe, Canada, Mexico and each of those has different consumption taxes. This is what I want to focus on today. So as a lot of you want to sell globally one day, you want to expand to selling in the US and Europe, expand your brand sales, these taxes are going to be important to you you regardless of where you are or where your company is based. And I know this can be a confusing topic, but by the end of this, you should understand exactly which taxes are applicable to which of your sales. So you should understand exactly how these systems work and what to expect. And before we move on, I had a cool announcement I wanted to add to this video. And that's that a lot of you asked us to jump onto Instagram. A lot of you use that in your day to day or when you're not at your laptop or on YouTube. So what we've done is we have set up an Instagram account, which is going live today. And I would really appreciate if you joined us over there. And what we're going to do is a mix of business and personal here, because I know some of you want to know about other things It might be fitness or crypto or investing. And so this is some way where we can mix that in. But if you follow us there, here's a couple of things you can expect. Number one, as you can see over here, is we're actually going to be adding infographics to every video we release. So as you can see there, we add a short snippet of the video coming out and then we add an infographic. So you have a quick educational breakdown of that video as well. So if you want the full content experience, make sure you go follow us over there. We're also going to be doing some open public Q and A's there, which I'm sure you're going to enjoy. You can ask me your questions on those as well. And then we're just going to be adding some of my favorite quotes and advice from some of the top entrepreneurs, which I think you're also going to find value in. And as a thank you to all of you for your support, we're also going to be giving away three $50 Amazon gift cards. And if you want to enter to stand a chance to win there, simply subscribe to the channel, like this video, and make sure to go follow us over on Instagram. But I'm looking forward to sharing more with you there. Let's get back to the video. And a quick disclaimer as usual, I'm not a financial advisor, not a tax advisor, and you should definitely check with yours before making business and tax decisions. And again, we're dealing with the taxes that are applied based on where you make that sale. These are consumption taxes. Now consumption taxes are paid directly or indirectly by the consumer when they make a purchase. So when someone makes a purchase from you as the seller, they are actually going to pay a consumption tax on that purchase. So as the seller, you need to account for that in the final price of that product, in the price charge to that consumer. A piece of that is going to be consumption tax. And generally how this works is that that piece of the final sale price, that consumption tax, is collected by you, the seller, and then passed on to the relevant tax authority of that country. But these consumption taxes differ between marketplaces, between countries. For example, if you make sales in the US to US customers, then you're likely going to be charging them sales tax on those purchases. So you're collecting sales tax on the behalf of certain states in the US and then remitting that sales tax to those states. If you're making sales in Europe or let's say the UK to UK customers, then you're going to be charging VAT on those purchases. You're collecting VAT on those sales, a piece of that sale price. In the UK, that's 20%. And then you're going to remit that VAT to the UK VAT authority in this example. And then in Canada, you're actually going to be charging goods and services tax, GST. So very similar to value added tax, VAT but it's called GST in Canada and the same principle applies. One thing that doesn't have a consumption tax though is clicking the like button. So let's break these down a little more. Let's deal with sales tax first and this is the one most of you will be the most interested in because it applies to the US market, the most popular market for sellers. Now sales tax in the US is a bit more complex and that's because the percentage of sales tax charged actually differs between different states in the US. Some states don't even charge sales tax at all, while others have higher sales tax rates like California. So each one differs and you're going to need to look into that. But we'll get more into the actual collection and remitting in a moment. The other thing that's important with sales tax is sales tax nexus, which is really just a fancy way of saying 
Is there enough of a connection with this state when that purchase occurs? Is there enough of a connection with this state for that state to charge sales tax on that purchase? That is sales tax nexus. Now, if you warehouse goods in a certain state, that often causes you to have sales tax nexus in that state. In other words, a purchase is going to be liable for sales tax in that state. Sometimes it's where the customer is based who purchased the product. That state is where sales tax is charged, etc. And there's all these complex rules on it, but that's what sales tax nexus is. And the reason for that is simply that you're using their infrastructure, roads, etc., to actually make that purchase happen. And so that's why they have the right to charge sales tax on that purchase. So that's how that works. Now, it used to be the case that you had to actually collect and remit sales tax in the US for almost every state. But now you'll be happy to hear that Amazon actually collects and remits a lot of the sales tax for you in all of the states where they have fulfillment centers. So I'm gonna put a list up here on screen for you. As you can see, they have fulfillment centers in all these states, and they're currently collecting for most of these states on your behalf. So that's gonna reduce admin on your side. And then many other states have something called the marketplace facilitator laws, which basically means, again, the marketplace itself needs to collect and remit on behalf of sellers. So in those cases, Amazon, again, is likely going to be collecting and remitting for you. I'm going to link an article on that below. Now, when it comes to collecting and remitting for the states, Amazon does not do that on your behalf for. There are a couple options. There's well-known services like TaxJar, which you can use, and that's going to automate everything for you. I do recommend that. Or you can actually do this yourself. You can manually set this up in Seller Central. You can log into Seller Central. You're going to click on Settings. Then you're going to click on Tax Settings. And then you're going to choose this option here where you can actually start to edit those settings. Here you can actually set certain percentages and then Amazon is going to automatically collect that percentage based on that state, etc. So you can actually set this up in Seller Central as well. So that is sales tax. And remember, it doesn't matter where you are based or your company is based, these are consumption taxes. So they're always going to happen. Now let's look at GST quickly. This is goods and services tax, also a consumption tax, but this is relevant if you sell in Canada. Now GST is what your consumers are going to be charged on their purchases from you. And the standard rate in Canada is set at 5%. But it should be noted that some Canadian provinces do charge PST, which is provincial sales tax. So in these cases, GST is added to PST and you actually end up with HST, which is harmonized sales tax rate. And that's what you're going to end up paying as a consumer on purchases. So this rate in general, when you add GST and PST together, and I'll put a graph up here for you or a table up here for you. But when you add those together in Canada in general, it's going to sit between 5% and 15% of that sell price. And lastly, let's look at VAT, which is value added tax, similar to GST, but VAT is different in that it is a flat rate and a national rate. So there's no like provincial sales tax added to this. It's one rate nationwide in most cases. Now, this is relevant for most European countries in our cases in, in terms of selling on Amazon, but it does have some quirks which are different to, for example, sales tax. For example, if you have a company actually registered in a European country, let's say in the UK, for example, then what happens is you actually have a threshold of sales, an annual threshold of sales. In the UK, it's 85,000 pounds. And before you have 85,000 pounds turnover, you do not need to register and collect and remit VAT. So when you pass that, or when you believe you will pass that in the current year, that is when you register for begin collecting and remitting VAT. So you have like a window, a threshold at the start of your business only if it is registered in a country which allows for such a threshold. And the UK is one of those. Remember, if you have a US LLC or a company registered anywhere other than Europe, then in most cases, you're going to need to immediately register for VAT 
to collect and remit that on all sales you make in Europe. Now for us sellers, there are other unique quirks with VAT in Europe, such as the distance selling thresholds. So let's say that you actually store all your inventory in the UK in Europe, that's your home marketplace but then you also sell into Spain. But you sell into Spain using the European Fulfillment Network. So your inventory stored in UK, when a Spanish customer buys from you, it's shipped from the UK to Spain. Well, in these cases, the distance selling threshold is applied. So until you're actually making 35,000 euros of sales annually in Spain, you do not need to, in this case, register for VAT in Spain because you're not storing inventory there. You're sending inventory into that country and you're not making significant enough sales to warrant you having to register for VAT in Spain. And each country has its own distance selling threshold. I'm gonna put that up here for you now. If you wanna pause that, you can see those different rates here. And do note that if you begin storing inventory in any of the European countries, let's say you move from European Fulfillment Network, which is where you send out to the different nations from one home marketplace in Europe. If you switch to pan-European FBA, for example, so you can offer prime shipping within those individual countries. So you're storing in Spain and Germany, France, Netherlands, etc., to be able to offer prime shipping in those different locations. If you do that, if you store inventory in a specific country in Europe, that is going to require immediate VAT registration there. Similar to how sales tax nexus works in the US, now when you store inventory there, there's enough of a connection. And that means you need to register for VAT there uh, when we talk about Europe. So here are some of the standard VAT rates across some European countries. I'm gonna put them up here, but some mentions here are the UK, 20%, Germany's 19%, France is 20%, Italy 22%, and you can see the trend here. Generally, it's going to be around 20%. Now, as you can see, VAT and also GST in Canada are generally higher percentages than sales tax in the US, which can be, you know, four, five, six percent Some states don't even have sales tax. So generally, VAT and GST are more. But it should be noted that even though that puts a bit of pressure on profit margins and makes choosing premium products and, and having that higher price more important in Europe and Canada, although that is the case, you're not always going to pay 20% of VAT because what we have spoken about to this point is output VAT. It is the VAT we are collecting from customers, but there is another type of VAT called input VAT. And input VAT is deductible from output VAT, and that gives you your VAT payable. In other words, you're not gonna pay the 20%, you're actually gonna pay the 20% minus your input VAT. So let me explain what input VAT is. So output VAT is the VAT we've discussed. You collect 20% of the sale price from your customer and you're gonna remit that. But any VAT your company pays during the same quarter, let's say, any VAT you pay, let's say you import inventory into the UK to sell it, you're actually gonna pay import VAT just as an example, this is VAT the company is paying on its expenses on running the business. And you can add up all of that input VAT and that is going to be deductible from your output VAT bill. So let's use this example here. You purchase a thousand units of inventory. Each unit costs you five pounds to manufacture and ship to the UK and make ready for sale. So it's worth a cost of 5,000 pounds when it enters the UK. We're then gonna pay import VAT on that at 20% and that's gonna to amount to 1,000 pounds. Remember that's input VAT. And then you go ahead and sell these products at 20 pounds each and four pounds of that 20% is output VAT. It's VAT you're charging your customers. So overall, once you've sold all of them, you've made 20,000 pounds and 4,000 pounds of that is output VAT that you need to now remit. But in the same quarter, you also had listing images made, you used a video company to make product videos and that cost you 500 pounds. 
and 20% of that was 100 pounds of input VAT. It's VAT you paid on that purchase, on that business expense. You also paid accountants in this period 400 pounds and that had 80 pounds of VAT, again, input VAT. So when we pay over that 4,000 pounds output VAT at the end of this quarter, we can actually claim back all of that input VAT we've just added up. So output VAT, minus input VAT equals VAT payable. In this case, 4,000 pounds minus 1,180 pounds equals 2,820 pounds. So in this case, effectively, this is why I was saying you're not always gonna pay a full 20% VAT. Effectively here, we're actually paying a 14.1% VAT rate. That's actually what we're paying over. So you can see how that works. And in short, the best possible thing to do here is just ensure your expenses include VAT. So if you're a UK company selling in the UK, try and use UK services. Try and show your expenses are UK based because that's going to increase your input VAT and in the, at the end of the day, reduce VAT payable. Now VAT is usually paid quarterly. That's like the standard scheme, but there are a lot of different schemes that you definitely want to look into. And these differ between countries, but I'm going to use the UK as an example. If your company has a turnover of less than 150,000 pounds, excluding VAT, in the UK, then you can actually use the flat rate VAT scheme. Now the flat rate that you would pay differs between businesses or business types, but for retailing not listed elsewhere, which I think is most relevant to us, it sits at 7.5%. But at 7.5%, what do we actually pay that on? Well, that's actually going to be on overall turnover, so on revenue. So instead of collecting it for every single little purchase and then, you know, working out your input VAT and deducting it for VAT payable and the admin involved there, if you're under that amount of sales annually, you're actually just going to pay a set rate. For example, it could be 7.5% if that fits your business model on overall turnover. So once you understand your turnover, you can pay that one rate to the government. Now you can also collect and remit VAT in various ways. Amazon actually has their own system for this, a VAT calculation service. That's actually called VAT services on Amazon. That's gonna cost you 400 euros per year per country. It's gonna include registration and filing, etc. I'm gonna put links below for you as well. But you also have some more professional or external services such as Amavat or Avalara, which I'm also gonna link for you below if you want other help with this as well. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video on taxes. You're a lot more clear on that. I hope you're interested in the membership as well. I look forward to seeing a lot of you guys in there. But until next time, keep well, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you